Welcome. Could you please tell me your name and tell me why you're here? Uh, my name is Kieran Sparrowhawk. I'm the, the chairman of My Cognition, which is a company based in the UK, but working with people here in the Netherlands. And we're trying to develop um, devices in the medical industry to be used in areas like uh, Alzheimer's, neurological disorders, and in psychiatric disorders where cognition is, is in deficit. At the same time, we're also working with healthy people to enhance their cognition. So within schools, to improve productivity within schools, and in businesses, offices, to improve the uh, productivity in the workplace. So if we are really um, well down to earth, what, what, what sort of things do you make? <laughs> yeah, very much so. We've, um, we've got two main products that are linked. We've, we've developed a, an assessment, so we can assess cognition across five domains. Those domains are working memory, episodic memory, attention, psychiatric, uh, psychomotor speed, and uh, executive function. So we give you a score for those five domains. So you you, you, you have to do something and then... Yeah, so you, you go online, you take, you take it, it's, it's, about, it's ten individual tests which overlap with each other, but the results came out, come out for those five domains. It takes about half an hour to, to take this online test, and mm -hmm. you should really concentrate when, you, when you're doing it, do, try, try to do your best. That within our system, it then we link that to a game. And so if you want to take part in the, in the training as well, you can take the test, then go on to take the game, and the game will train you through a video. So you're playing a video game, and uh, you think it's just a plain video game, but woven into the game are loops of learning on those five domains. So the training is actually whilst you're playing a, a video game that we hope is fun and engaging, so you don't actually know that you're being trained. Yeah, so, so that's why you say woven in, it's not too obvious that you're learning something. We try not to make it too obvious. A, a, a psychologist, a, a game trainer, they'd know, they could say, oh, that, you're, that's where you're doing attention, that's where you're doing executive functioning. But hopefully to a lay person, they just think they're playing a game, they don't realise. Yeah. So, so what sort of worlds did it involve uh, or were, were needed to, to come to this? Well, it's, it's, it's quite a mixture of people really. Um, yeah. My background is in pharmaceuticals and I've been involved in drug development for 37 years almost, something like that. So when I got involved with this, I said, well, if we're going to develop this, let's develop it as though it's a drug, let's put it into clinical trials. And that way we can build the evidence to show that it works, rather than just you know rely on anecdotal evidence or a few people saying yes it made this change that change. Or a lot of people who say it's fun. Or it's fun, yeah. yeah we'll yeah. get a celebrity, you know, something like that, <laughs> yeah. which, which we you know we, we could do as well. But we want to get the evidence. We want to show in in trial evidence that that, that it actually works. And that means like putting it into a protocol. So the latest study that, that was announced, uh, the results, the interim results that were announced at uh, Games for Health this morning. Uh, there we did a study in, in, in a school in the Netherlands. We had 300 students aged between 11 and 13 who played the game. They were matched with controls who didn't play the game. So all 600 students took the test, took that assessment to see what their cognition was. The, 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 the children that trained on the game, they played it for, for up to 60 minutes a week for four weeks. They were then, we then retested them against the controls and we saw an enhancement across all the five domains of cognition really? in, the, in, the, in, the, in the game playing, two of which, which were at a level of significance, you know, uh, oh, less than uh, P equals um, 0.05. So we've shown statistically significant improvements, which is great. Uh, that's a, that's a really good finding to, to, to do. In what was as controlled uh, uh, conditions as we could find. Yeah. So we think that we really are beginning to build the evidence. We're starting the steps out to, um, uh, you know, to, to do what we set out to do. Yeah. So, so you say you've got a, a, a background in, in uh, pharmaceuticals? Oh yes, I did mention yeah. the rest of the team. I just talked about myself, didn't I? It's terrible. <laughs> terrible. No problem. But, but, um, through connections that I had in the pharmaceutical industry, I, I managed to get hold of John Harrison who's a cognition expert, and of course he's the chairman for the, for the, um, for the two days meeting here. He's worked with many pharmaceutical companies, they bring him in and say, we're working on cognition, what sort of tests should we do? And I can remember when I first had this discussion with him, I thought he might turn around and say, you're crazy. But he said, no, this is it, we, 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 uh, this, is, you know, this is where the future is going to go. So he was well on board. And then through searching, I came across Urian van Wisnik, who of course runs Games for Health, yeah. Um, came across that was two years ago. I came across that he was running this this meeting. I couldn't come then because I was off travelling. I couldn't come last year because I was involved in other things. So <laughs> now at last we've, we've managed to come. Um, we've been working with Urian though, and he puts us in touch with uh, the little chickens, who uh, are the software developers and the weird beards who helped us with all the pro uh, all the processing uh, and that. 
so there was a, a, a real strong collaboration of people there. Yeah, um, but also quite different worlds. Is is, is that a difficulty? Uh, and no, 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 and again, it was um, when when I was I was at the meeting when I brought Yuri and, and John together, yeah. and you're thinking these people are coming from quite different worlds. Will they get on? Yeah. And the meeting sort of got going, and I kept thinking, I don't know. And then suddenly, it was like you know, it was like they were like a house on fire. And every time they meet now, there's positive sparks of brilliance come out from them. So put those two people together and it, they, they really do. And where, where it came about um, was, Yuran was talking about game flow, about when you're getting people engaged in the game and that you get them in this zone. And John said, that's compliance. That's a, if you can get compliance with, with, with the training, then whoever's taking part in the training will continue on the training. And the training, he, he always believed that brain training would work if you could get people to do it deeply and long enough. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's, so that's what we've tried to do. So we've used Yuren's expertise in producing fun and engaging games and getting people in that zone. And then we've laced it with John's expertise in terms of cognition training. And that's the recipe for, in this case, uh, a perfect meal. A success. Yeah, success. yeah, yeah, yeah recipe for success. It, well, it sounds like it's, it, well, it's, it's a long process. So where, it is. where does the money come from? Um, at the moment, it's all self-funded. Um, so we've we've got funding to go out to the end of next year. Is is that difficult getting funding um, for, for things well it, like it this? Means, um, it means it means <laughs> I probably won't have any savings. It means um, I don't get a salary. Uh -huh. um, so that's even further working for my my savings. Um, so you're sacrificing to that extent. But this is important. I think you know. That, uh, in some ways, we, we, we think like what we've done has been groundbreaking. It's tiny, um, and there's some people here doing some fantastic things. So. This is a very vibrant area. So coming from pharmaceuticals, I almost see this area being like where the pharmaceutical industry was 80 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was just at the start, just had a few drugs. And the medical community then didn't like pharmaceuticals. They thought, well, you're going to take our jobs away from us. And I think we're seeing a similar thing here where there's lots of scepticism about, you know, you're just, it's just games. Yeah. And probably they're dangerous. You know, we shouldn't be playing with them. Um, and with evidence, this is what it comes back to. If we, if we can produce the evidence to so show they're safe, here they're effective. They're as effective in some instances as drugs. Why not use these? They're non systemic. They're not, you know, no, there's no side effects for, for, for what we're doing. Um, so if we could do that, I think we could, the area could really take off. So from my point of view, that you know, if we're making sacrifices, if we're making sacrifices to do that now, uh, they're, well, they're worthwhile sacrifices to make. But that doesn't mean to say that we're not, we're not out there looking for potential alliances yeah. um, and uh, people money want to fund. and funding. And yeah. So if, if, but is that difficult to? to it, it, is it, it difficult to get people to well to take it seriously and, and say? Well, I, I because I, when you when you read uh, about, no. about America, there seems to be a lot of seem to be a lot of investors who really think that this is going to be the big thing. I think so. I mean, particularly uh, um, uh, the California area, the San Francisco and the, and the like, you know, Silicon Valley, there, there's a concentration there of not just uh, the people doing this type of work, but also investors, a lot of, you know, basically a lot of people, a lot of money, yeah. who have got an interest in that area. And I think there are pockets within Europe. And I think it was said, said today when, when um, uh, Jan, Jan de Boer, uh, from KPMG, he said, Europe has got to, you know, we've got, we've got the makings of to do that in Europe. And we, we certainly have. We've got the skills, we've got the knowledge here, we've got the expertise. Let's put it together, let's make something of it. And so um, I don't think governments are going to fund this. Uh, I think it's going to come from private individuals. Um, and hopefully, yeah, they, let, let's, let's not let the rest of the world take, take, go forward on this. This is something that Europe could, could do really well as well. Um, so hopefully, we, we, you know, with little bits of evidence coming out like what we're producing, People say, actually, there is something in this. These people aren't just messing around. There's something serious. We can apply this. Um, we're aiming to do things which are, you know, combating very big problems that our societies are facing with the aging population, with the explosion of in costs and misery that there will be with a with a, with a growing population and, and Alzheimer's and, and other disorders taking on. So, this is a, a serious application to a serious serious area. Um, so, hopefully, that that with the uh, I say always come back to the evidence that we're producing. That will encourage people to to part with their money and say this is this is worth investing in, mm. uh, and let's do it. So that, that's that's our hope. Yeah. So now you've got the evidence. Uh, um, you, you've got a working well game. Yeah. Uh, um, what, what's next? Well, we want to do further studies. We want to do further pilots in in other schools. We want to take the take the product out into schools. Um, 
that are, that are interested in, in improving the cognition of their, of their pupils. As I said, we're also going into businesses, and within businesses we're setting up, we're again, the same way of trying to do pilot studies. And we want to link what we're doing direct to productivity within a business um, to show that there's a benefit in doing this there as well. And uh, we've got two clinical trials in, in the offing, um, one in a psychiatric population with um, AMC, the Amsterdam Medical Centre, here in Amsterdam, um, and one with the University of Maastricht, where we're looking at a Parkinson's patient population, and they, they will both start next year. So how did you end up in Holland? Um, well, it, I guess it was uh, when, we, when we began to have the advisors, one of them was Yuri, and yeah. Yuri and then had, gave us the links. I think there's, it, there's, it comes come back to this, there's a tremendous concentration here in Holland, if you, if you like, per head of population. In, uh, some great expertise on the software side. Um, I think in terms of on the schooling, on, on, the, on the healthcare side, there's also they're not as, as conservative as we are in the UK, so they're willing to you know, come in and come in and try it. So they're more open that way. Um, but it's great, you know. This is something that um, um, they always say in business you, you should work, work with the smartest people. You should always employ smart people, and I say in my case that's easy people that are smarter than me, so I'm surrounded by, by them. Um, but you go for the expertise, we've got great expertise in, in, in Europe, we can work together. This is, the, this is the good thing about Europe, when, yeah. when we can do things like this. Yeah. Um, so coming here, it's, uh, it's great to find the you know, people willing to work with us and they take our ideas and they, they improve on them tremendously. So, so how long before it, it's out there for people to buy, to use, to we, 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 may, we may have um, sort of products of a, of a certain level uh, in next year. We hope, we hope to make them available in some ways next year. But we, we, the way we're working is that we're constantly going to be innovating these, mm -hmm. constantly going to be improving them, constantly taking them to new levels of, of approval. So, on, for instance, on the clinical side, we have to take this all the way through to get European Medicines Agency, EMEA, approval. We have to get FDA approval, Food and Drugs Administration approval in the US. But in the meantime, we may get before we get to those stages, which will, which will take a very long time and very costly, we may get a lower level of approval where we can make the products available into the medical um, arenas because because it's a non-invasive medical device. Mm. Under those circumstances, people can use it. So early, at earlier stages, um, we can begin to sell a version of it. Um, and hopefully get bringing some revenues because if we're going to get investment that's what people want to see that you've got a viable product that's going to be bringing those revenues in so if we can start getting a stream of revenues coming in next uh, next year that will certainly help us when, when going out there to say to people um, would you like to invest in this it looks look like you've got more of a going concern yeah. thank you very much good luck thank you it's been a pleasure thank you <laughs>